not too long ago, um, one of my friends contacted me and asked me if they could borrow some material for some children that they were teaching. And so I got them the material just a short time before they actually had to teach it. And I felt terrible about it. I apologized to them and I said, I'm so sorry that I'm getting to this to you so late. And their response was this. Um, it's no big deal. I only need a couple of hours to prepare anyway. I've been doing this for a long time. And you know, when they said that to me, my heart um, just kind of broke a little bit. But I don't think that they're alone. I think that there are a lot of people teaching children that view it that same way. That it's just something that they can throw together at the last minute and it's really not that big of a deal. For some reason, um, we often view teaching the Word of God to children differently than we do adults. But the Word of God is pretty clear. It says in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1, that not many of you should become masters or teachers because those who are teachers, it says, will receive the stricter judgment or the greater condemnation. You see, teaching the Word of God, regardless of who you're teaching it to, is a high and a holy calling. It's never something that we should take lightly. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about some different steps of preparation. How should you then prepare to teach the Word of God to children? Um, well, number one, the very first thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is taking time to pray. Um, it was Thomas Jefferson that actually said, the very first and most important step that you will ever take is to first acknowledge to God that you need him. And you know, we need um, God for everything in our lives, but especially to teach his word. Um, I cannot convict a child of sin. I cannot help a Christian child grow in their faith. I need to acknowledge to God that I need him. I need to ask him to speak to my heart and show me what it is that he wants me to be teaching. Um, but I also need to take time to examine myself um, and say, God, search my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me because we want to be um, clean vessels that are um, readily available for the master's use. Um, in the book of Ezra, um, it said that Ezra prepared his heart to teach. And so we need to prepare ourselves first and then ask God, God, what is it that you want me to be teaching to the children? And then the next thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is taking time to read the scripture. So sometimes it's so easy just to go to the Bible lesson teaching notes or that lesson text and not actually read the Word of God and see what He says. But then how can you tell the children that God's Word says this when you haven't read it yourself? And also it's as I'm reading God's Word um, that He's really speaking to my heart. Um, that He's um, showing me the truths that I need to teach to the children. Um, sometimes as I read the text, it's a story that's very, very familiar. Um, David and Goliath, or um, maybe Moses crossing the Red Sea, and it just seems old and familiar to me. Um, but as I go to the Word of God and I search it and I pray, God, speak to my heart. God, show me something new. Show me something exciting in this that I haven't seen before. That he really begins to change me and get me excited then to take that lesson and teach it to the children. And you know, that really makes all the difference. And then after you've read the Word of God, then yes, it is very, very important that you take time to read the Bible lesson teaching notes that come with the lesson itself. Sometimes when you're going to teach a passage of Scripture, it may only be five verses long. And it's hard for you to imagine um, what it would have been like. It's hard for you to put yourself in that story. Um, so read the lesson teaching notes. Um, that helps to make the story come alive for you. It helps you to imagine um, what it would have been like. It helps you to imagine the time period and the surroundings. Um, and then as you read those Bible lesson teaching notes, it will help you take the text that you have already read and make it come alive for the children that you're teaching. So after you've read um, the scripture, you've read the Bible lesson teaching notes, then you really need to take some time to 
study the passage of scripture that you're teaching. And so you're beginning to see why this is not something that you can do in just one or two hours. Because you need to study the passage of scripture itself. Maybe there is a difficult topic that you're going to be teaching on, um, like atonement or something involving the sacrifices, or maybe even love right marriage, or maybe you just need to study the surrounding text. What came before this in scripture? What is coming after? Um, so you need to take time to really know the material um, and the scripture that you're teaching. It's been said before that you have to know a great deal in order to be able to teach a little. Um, and that's so true. If you just know what's on the paper in front of you that you're teaching, children will know that. It'll be so obvious to them. So take time to s read a commentary. Um, maybe you have a good um, study Bible that you can use. Sometimes I like to look up big words. I'm not sure how to explain them. I like to look them up in a children's dictionary. You can find that online. Or sometimes I even read the story that I'm teaching in a children's storybook Bible. Um, my daughter has this storybook Bible. It's called the Jesus Storybook Bible. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. But I was recently teaching the story of Abraham and Isaac. So I went to her storybook Bible and I read it there first. And I loved, as I was reading it, the author of that um, wrote over and over again, Abraham trusted God more than what his eyes could see. And I loved that. Um, what a good way to describe faith for children. Um, so there are all kinds of resources that you can use. Um, but make sure that you're not just studying um, the text that's in front of you. You really have to know it for yourself. And then after you have taken time to study it, then the very next thing that you want to do is you want to get organized. Write it out yourself. I remember when I was in college and I was taking a class called Teaching Bible, and I would see uh, people who were older than me teaching with flashcards, and they would have all these notes on the back. And I would think to myself, why do they need to know that? <laughs> I had a better memory than I do now. Um, and now I really see the value because there is no way that you can remember everything that you want to teach. You need to take time to organize it, write it out. Um, I learn even just by writing. The simple act of writing it out will help me to remember it later. So write out the sequence of events. Um, make sure that you know what happens first. Make sure that you know as you're writing it out, what are the biggest, what are the most important points in this Bible lesson? And then as you organize it on paper, you want to make sure that you are then going back to it and adding in the application, right? Because the Bible is not given to us just so that we can have a good storybook. Now, there are a lot of good stories in the Bible, right? I love that story of David and Goliath. I love the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. That's one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture. But if a child comes to your Sunday school class or your Bible club and they just hear a story, we've kind of missed the point. Because if a child comes and they're not saved, the most important thing that they need to hear is not all these details about this little shepherd boy named David, but they need to hear the gospel. Um, they need to know that they've sinned and that their sin, it separates them, it keeps them from a holy God. But how God made a way for them to be brought back to him. He sent his one and only son to die in their place. They need to hear the gospel. So think about your lesson. Think about where you can teach them about sin. Where can you teach them about the cross and how Jesus came and gave his precious blood to pay for their sin? And then write it down on your outline. Put it in where you're going to teach it in the lesson. And then not just that, but think about the saved children that are coming to your Sunday school class. Um, they need you um, to then tell them how this story that happened thousands of years ago affects them right now today, 
right? How should it change the way that they live? How does it apply to them personally? So think about that one main truth that you want to pull out for the saved child as well. Maybe it's that God wants you to love your enemies. Or maybe it's that you know that God will always hear and answer your prayer. And think about then where you can take that very important truth and put it into that lesson that you are teaching. So plan it out, write it down, because if you don't, chances are that you may forget it. So after you've done all of that, you've read the scripture, well, you've prayed first, you've read the scripture you've read the lesson text, you've studied, you've organized it, then the very next thing that you need to do and you've planned for the application is that you need to, and this is so important, and this is the step I think that people skip over most often, and that is that you need to practice it out loud. And I know that that's hard. It's not easy to find time to do that. But there is something about saying it out loud Um, You need to do that at least once before you say it out loud in front of all the children. Um, When I'm studying or preparing a Bible lesson, when I'm thinking about it in my mind and I'm writing it down on paper, everything just sounds so good and so smooth. And then once I speak it out loud the first time, I start to notice all those things that really didn't work the way that I planned them. You don't want to be noticing that in front of the children. You want to practice it so that you have a smooth delivery. Um, Think about if you are stumbling all over the place and you're tied to the notes as you teach, what are you really showing them about the Word of God? Um, You're showing them that it's not actually that important anyway. Um, So make sure that you take time to practice it out loud. And then finally, the last thing that you and I need to do is to trust the Lord for the results. I cannot um, help a saved child grow in their faith. I cannot help an unsaved child understand their sin and their need of the gospel. We need God, the Holy Spirit, to work in their hearts. And so the results are not up to us, but God has called us to be faithful in preparing. Remember we said earlier, not many of you should become teachers, right? Because you're going to receive the stricter judgment. Um, So it's a high and it's a holy calling, Um, but God is the one um, who is responsible for the results. And so let's just take a minute to pray and ask God to help us with that. Um, Father, we thank you. We thank you so much that you have given us your word. And God, we thank you for the opportunity to teach it to others. Um, God, we ask that you would please um, help us, Lord, to handle your word carefully, that you would help us to study it and to be careful as we share it with these children, and that you would take these men and women that are listening to this and that you would speak through them um, and that you would do wonderful things through them and draw children to yourself. Amen.